I'm rock. And I'm paper. And this is the Hogwarts! Dude, we're having a weird owl costume contest down the street. I need a Hawaiian shirt, a slash wig, and if you're not using it this week, your Alex Trebek mustache. Dude? Dude, I'm busy. Puzzle, eh? Oh, the Pink Floyd albums on the naked lady backs. That'll classy up the place. What are you doing? I'm just gonna help you make the puzzle. I don't need help from the guy who did the puzzle in Titanic. He couldn't even do the iceberg. That's because there was no iceberg. It wasn't even the Titanic. It was just a boat. A sailboat. I'm pretty sure the Titanic had some sails. It had everything. Except enough lifeboats. Besides, I don't need your help. I'm pretty great at all things puzzles. From jigsaw puzzles to puzzle video games like Tetris, Dr. Mario. And of course, Kirby's Avalanche. Kirby's Avalanche? The game's just a ripoff of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. No, your game's a ripoff. You wanna bet? So, looks like both of our games are a ripoff of Poyo Poyo? Pio Pio? Whatever, my game's still better than yours. We'll see about that. Poyo Poyo is the tile matching video game created by Compile. It was an early attempt to compete with the ultimate fall blocking game, Tetris. An arcade version released in 1992 was the first version that included a one player story mode, in which human players played against computer opponents of increasing difficulty. Console versions also included this feature. And there were many console versions. Sega released their version in February 1993 under the name Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. This game featured Sonic characters. Nintendo would also get their version of Puyo Puyo for the Super Nintendo outside Japan, under the name Kirby's Avalanche, or Kirby's Ghost Trap in Europe. This game featured characters from the Kirby series, a puzzle game based in two popular franchises. Which one's better? Let's find out. Graphics is gonna be tough, since our games look so similar. No it's not, because my game looks better. The puzzle pieces in Sega are lively and animated. They look just as good, actually better on Super Nintendo. The opponents on Sega have pictures with different animations. No big deal. Nintendo has those different animations too. Also, my opponents are unique, being based on the Kirby universe. So? My game's cooler because the opponents are not only based from characters in the Sonic universe, but from the Sonic cartoon. That is cool. Too bad it's not based on the good cartoon, but the bad one that everyone's trying to forget. It's not as bad as the Kirby cartoon. Oh, wait, there is no Kirby cartoon. There is a Kirby cartoon. There is? Really? Well, I hope he doesn't act as weird as he does in your game. What is he doing? Freaking out in the corner there. It's like he's going insane for being trapped in this tiny little box. I guess he doesn't look as good as Sonic. Oh, wait, there is no Sonic in your game. Just a Pikachu looking guy? Hey, don't make fun of Hasbeen. You got no right to make fun of me. Not with a dumb name like Kirby's Avalanche. Dr. Robotnik's mean bean machine makes sense because the puzzle pieces look like beans. Kirby's Avalanche though? No idea. It comes from when you block an opponent. The pieces come down like an avalanche. Hence, Kirby's Avalanche. That's not what an avalanche looks like. It looks like this. Or this. Or this. It's called use your imagination. You're just reaching out because you know my game looks better. Regardless of all your complaints, side by side, my game looks better. With a sharper look and the actual hero in the game. Best graphics go to Nintendo. Well, Super Nintendo's gonna win presentation because it's loaded with cutscenes. There's a nice tutorial video for beginners. And before you face each opponent, you get a little cutscene with the Kirby characters. It's all topped off with an ending, of course. That's nothing special. 
I have those cutscenes too. I have the same tutorial video. My game also has the same setup for cutscenes, but with Sonic characters instead. My game is topped off with a nice ending too. But one thing I have that you don't is an intro. Yeah, you have an intro. But too bad it looks almost exactly the same as another cutscene. Plus, once again, no Sonic in your game, but my cutscenes are loaded with Kirby. That's quite an interesting Kirby you have. Kirby typically doesn't talk. He's usually depicted as a mute character. But not in this game. In this game, he talks a lot. And what do we learn about Kirby? Well, he's kind of a dick. Kirby's a dick! Kirby's a dick! He'll make fun of you! Doesn't care if you're scared! He just does what he wants! Dick! That doesn't make my presentation look bad. Well, a Sega game is better placement of the opponents. Your opponent on Sega has the picture of their reactions right in the center. This gives you a nice clear view without blocking anything. This is great, because some of the reactions are hilarious. Now the Super Nintendo has the picture on the opponent's actual puzzle area. It can either go behind the puzzle, or in front. If it's behind, you don't get to see the reactions clearly. And if it's in front, you can't tell how your opponent's doing. If you're not sacrificing the beans or the picture, Sega has the better presentation. Not so fast! We barely scratched the surface of presentation. Let's look at our layouts. Sure, they're puzzle games and don't need much to look at, but Super Nintendo at least tried. They made it look kirby themed The first eight stages have a forest look to them. Then the rest of the stages have more of a nighttime dreamland look. It's not much, but it's something. Especially compared to the Sega game, which is rocks. Just rocks. Rocks in the foreground, and rocks in the background. And it's rocks the entire game. You just took the background from Puyo Puyo. Couldn't you have it more Sonic themed? And even Puyo Puyo changed its background after stage 8. Also, in Super Nintendo, you see the opponent's name during gameplay. On Sega, it just says Dr. R, no matter who your opponent is. So the Super Nintendo opponent's pictures gets covered. With actual effort in the layouts and stages, best presentation goes to Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo definitely has a better sound. These songs can be light and playful. They can also give a feeling of panic. They're perfect for a puzzle game. That's nothing compared to Sega's music. The electronic sound of Sega shines here. some pretty deep tunes. It's ridiculously good for a puzzle game. Music is just one part of sound. Super Nintendo definitely wins with solid voiceovers. These are, hands down, some of the clearest voiceovers on 16 bits. Bronto Burt! Wispy Woods. Lololo and la la la. Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright. Met tonight. King day day day. And behold, the greatest voiceover in 16 bits. Squishy. With a great soundtrack and solid voiceovers, sound has to go to Super Nintendo. Whoa, I have voiceovers too. Your voiceovers are so lame. You only have three voiceovers and they sound terrible. Voiceovers aside, I don't think you understand exactly how much better my music is than yours. Sega has a better credits theme. Sega has a much better versus theme.
Even the unused music sounds better on Sega. So, your game cheats and remixes music from Puyo Puyo. So, your game remixes music from the Kirby franchise. That's different. How? It just is. With a soundtrack full of 16-bit goodness, the best sound goes to Sick. My game plays exactly like Puyo Puyo. So is mine. I'm sure mine's better. The goal of the game is to beat your opponent, a computer or a person. The beans come down two at a time. I think you mean puzzle pieces? We don't call them beans in my game. Whoa, no interrupting. Anyway, there's a total of five different colors. If four or more of the same colors touch, beans disappear. <sighs> I think you mean pieces. <clears throat> Quiet. If you chain multiple sets of colors to disappear, then that chain will cause refugee beans to fall on your opponent's side. The word you're looking for is avalanche, because they avalanche on your opponent's side. Will you stop interrupting? I would if you used the right words. Anyways, the more you chain, the more refugee beans fall. You can only get rid of the refugee beans when you clear the regular pieces. The best strategy is to get a nice chain, limit your opponent's moves, and wipe them out. Other than your poor vocab, my game plays the same, but I have various game modes. I have a versus mode. Sega has it too. Well, I have a practice mode. It's called exercise mode on Sega. I have learning stages to help beginners. With the exercise mode and the instructional video, isn't the learning stage a bit redundant? You're just upset because I have something your game doesn't. I have the option to start the game from the first stage or the fourth stage, just like Puyo Puyo. Fourth stage, huh? I wish I could do that. You know, just start on the fourth stage, but... Oh, oh wait! I can! Actually, I could do that on every stage, because my game has a password system. Something so simple, yet so convenient. The Sega game has a password system, and the Super Nintendo does not. Checkmate. So, I can do that with a cheat code. Yeah, but it's so tedious. You have to have a controller in port too. Hold down the face buttons, reset the game, go into options, then custom, then special custom, and finally, select the stage. Then, you have to exit all the menus one by one, go to competition, and then learning stage. So many steps! On Sega, just enter four beans. Done. Much more convenient. Well, tons of puzzle games don't have passwords. Yeah, that's usually true, but our games are a little different. You look at puzzle games like Tetris or Columns, and they don't have a password. And those games are all great without it. Those games, however, don't have a final boss. Mean Bean Machine and Kirby's Avalanche do. Those other puzzle games are played to get a high score. There's technically no real end to those games. But the point of our games isn't a high score, but to beat it. Beating it in one sitting is an option, but isn't it a better option to stop it and pick it up another time or day? And these games aren't exactly easy. A beginner will definitely struggle. Wouldn't it be nice for them to have a password when they stop so they don't have to start all the way from the beginning every time they play? Does the password make my game better? You bet it does. The password system giving it a slight edge. Gameplay goes to Sega. Even though both games are practically identical, the best puzzle game goes to Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. It may not have the sharpest graphics, nicest presentation, or crisp voiceovers, but it really makes up for it with its solid soundtrack and gameplay. Honestly though, the games really aren't too different. If you're a Kirby fan, then you'll enjoy Kirby's Avalanche more. If you're a Sonic fan, you'll enjoy Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine more. If you don't care about either character, then the Sega game is probably your best bet. It's not the easiest puzzle game to pick up. It starts off kinda simple, and then it gets difficult very fast. If you're new to it, it's gonna be a while before you beat it. Having a password system spreads out your playtime, so you don't have to do it in one sitting. The later levels are very difficult, being able to walk away from it for a bit can be a nice relief. Even though both games are very similar, there can be only one winner, and that game is Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Thanks for watching our latest video. Be 
sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks to everyone who suggested Kirby's Avalanche vs. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. And keep those other suggestions coming. We will get to them. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter for behind-the-scenes stuff. Later. <laughs>